hopefully our technology doesn't like it as well. We're going to be in Matthew chapter 5 this morning. Matthew chapter 5. We're going to be looking at uh, verses 13 through, through 16, talking about salt and light. You know, uh, sometimes it's a little difficult to put messages together whenever you're, whenever you're at camp. So uh, hopefully, uh, you, know, uh, you know, especially when you've got so many other things going on in your mind at the same time, it's hard to like change, transition, but... But uh, as I was, as I was, you know, kind of looking at it, you know, what we're, what we're doing, what we what we're seeing is is what is the result of some folks who are who are salt and light. Can everybody hear me? Okay, is that is that a little better? So let's look at Matthew five thirteen through sixteen, and then we'll just get right into it. Would you stand with me for the reading of God's word? The scripture says. In Matthew 5, beginning at verse 13, Ye are the salt of the earth. But if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Will you pray with me? Dear Lord, I just ask that you will help us to look into our lives today to see, are we the salt and the light that you have called us to be in this world? We see that there's so many, so many things going on. I mean, almost as if, you know, we are in the days of Noah where where the imaginations of men's hearts are evil continually. But every now and then, Lord, we see this little glimmer of hope, just like we have seen this week. And we know, Lord, it is because there are some folks that are still in this country who believe that they are called to be salt and light in the midst of a very dark and bitter world. So I pray that you will help us this morning, that we would see ourselves the way that you want, want to see us. And to guide us, Lord, in your ways and to understand these principles and to apply them to our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, eh, you may be seated. Uh, just to remind you, when, when we get to this passage of Matthew chapter 5, well, Jesus has just finished... All the Beatitudes, all the blessed are those, those people who are poor in spirit. Blessed are those that mourn. Blessed are those that are meek. Blessed are those which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. And then he says, you guys that are the blessed. You are the salt of the earth. You've got to go through this process that we were talking about just a couple of weeks ago of what, you know, what, it, what's, what is Jesus talking about? What's with all those, those things? Lord, it's good for me that I go through all of these things so that I can be what this world needs. is salt and light. Now, Jesus, he draws this, definitely this is a, you know, this is a, um, you know, kind of an allegory, symbology, so to speak, because really, you know, nobody, nobody wants to come up and, you know, see, see if you taste salty, right? You know, you might get, a, you might be a little weirded out if people come around and start licking you to see if you're salty, right? So we're not, that's not what we're talking about. We're also not talking about people glowing like a light bulb either, are we? But what comes out of the life of somebody that's wanting to live for Jesus is something similar to these things that we use in our everyday life. Salt. 
I mean, does anybody here not salt, have any salt in their food? Like you only eat green stuff, you know, you never, you never eat anything that has salt in it. And, and you know, it'd probably be, you probably, and now in my house, there, there may be quite a bit of salt, you know, because we, we like regular salt and then we like Tony's. Anybody here like some Tony's on their, some of their stuff? There's a few of you who know what I'm talking about. You know what good stuff is all about. Maybe, you, maybe you're like Joy. She's got this special, specialized seasoning stuff. And then every now and then she gets these, this salt. That it's, like, it's like big pink rocks. Anybody ever use that kind of salt? Oh, yeah. That's, that's the best kind right there, right? Then, you know, it's the sea salt, you know, and it, it doesn't. So it's good stuff. Good minerals inside of it. Good for your body. Of course, you need it. Your body needs it. I hear I was I was thinking about it one day at camp. There was this kid. He was wearing a he was wearing a hat, and there was a lot of hats being worn this week because it was. I mean that sun was tough, and we were out in it a lot. I mean y'all probably came back here like. I start I'm starting to get so dark that there was a there was a Hispanic girl there, and people were starting to think that I was her dad. <laughs> I mean that. And uh, this isn't this isn't sun, this isn't tanning bed. This is just just getting cooked, you know. <laughs> so uh, and I'm like, well, I guess I guess you could be my adopted daughter. And so anyway, we had some fun with that, and I accepted it because I'm I'm starting to feel my age. I'm like, yeah, I guess I am old enough to be your dad. So I, I'll take it. I'll take it. But what we you know what what we what I saw on that kid. He's wearing that cap. And he had this white line that just kind of jagged across the top of his hat. It was a black hat. And you know what that white line was? His salt line. Yeah, as the salt was coming from his head, it was, it was seeping up into his hat because it was, he was just sweating. Your body needs that. You know, that it's a mineral that, that's worth something. You need it. You know, when nobody, you can, you're not going to go to Walmart and they just give you salt for free, right? I can remember when we were in Utah, they, would have, they were pulling all this salt out of the salt lake there, and they just had mounds and mounds of salt that they were going to sell. It was valuable. They were making money off of it. People, people's lives depended on that mining of that salt. It's, it's, it has value. It's worth God looks at you, and he says, as someone who's blessed, if you've got those attributes in your life, you're worth something. You're worth something. Don't think, oh, I'm, I'm nothing. Every single one of you here has a value on you. A lot of people these days, they don't think that, they're, they, don't, that they don't have any value. They don't have anything to contribute. You know, even if, uh, you know, even if you're like, well, I'm just... You know, all I really I'm doing right now, I, I've just kind of got to the point where all I can really do is is hold down a pew. I, I, you know, there's part of me that appreciates it. You know how hard it is to teach to to preach to nobody. I at least need I need that. It helps. There's value. Everybody's got all kinds of different value in their life. Sometimes you you know you're able to to use your gifts and talents, but you know whenever things change in your life, that value is going to change. Does it make it less of a value? No, it just kind of repositions it. It's worth something. I was doing a little bit of study on what they use salt for. Did you know that they use that in some countries they take salt when they're when they're when their cooking fire gets too hot, they'll throw salt on the fire to cool it down a little bit. That they use it as like a fire suppression. And I started thinking about that, you know, that that. So if we need people who are salt in this world to, to help restrain hell's effect on a civilization, aren't you glad that there's some salt out there who, who are willing to fight the good fight for Roe v. Wade? Do you realize how many millions of lives are going to be saved because now they can no longer go down to the corner and have a life taken care of? No longer is the federal government just going to be able to support that and channel our tax-paying dollars to such an evil, evil thing. And it really is. When you're taking the life of innocents and children, 
That's evil. That's wicked to the highest degree imaginable. And now we have, and it's all because there's some people that were salt in this world. I have a son that's a borderline theologian. And he made a comment when we were just kind of talking about it. He said, you know, I wonder... I wonder if that's kind of why, you know, the, the, you know, when the rich man went to hell, you know, it was, why hell so hot? There's nobody that's salty there. Why he was so thirsty? Because, you know, if that kid who's got all that salt on, his, on, on the top of his hat, he needed to replace that. And you would see them, they would go in and they would, and they would, they would drink that, they would drink that water. And, and really they needed, they needed more than just water. They needed, they needed like Gatorade. They need stuff with some salt and some electrolytes in it to replenish. That rich man in hell, he was thirsty. And his thirst could not be quenched. It was because he was not salt in this life right now. And he was never going to have his thirst quenched in hell. Hell has nothing. It has nothing for you. It's the place where the fire is not quenched. You can't throw enough salt on that to make it cool down. There's not enough water. There's not going to be any water in there to quench your thirst. There's no Gatorade in hell. There's no party going on in hell. It's the place where the worm dieth not. And there's really only one way to escape hell. And that's to be salt and light in this world. When you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, and whenever you're born again and you, live, and you allow him to live through you, that is the only way. Hey, that's what Jesus said. I am the only way, the truth, and the life. There's only one way to the Father. That's through him. That's through him. It helps control blood pressure. Now, I get it. If you get too much salt in your life, but really, when you start looking at it, it if you don't have any, you're, it's going gonna, it's gonna to have trouble stabilizing your body's environment. Well, that's exactly why you're here. Why, when you were born again, God just didn't rapture you out immediately because he needs you here to be the salt of this, of this earth to help stabilize all the nonsense that, that's coming through. Somebody's got to pray. Someone's got to work. And that's what you're called to do. That's what I'm called to do. You see, the devil, his goal is to cause mass chaos and confusion. Isn't it something that we start seeing some sanity happen in our own country, yet there are protests and revolts going on because now they can't murder folks legally. Does that even make sense? The logic factor does not compute. Now, and I'm sure somebody's going to, maybe they'll view this and they're like, oh, that preacher up there at Bethany. Look, God loves children. Amen. They are a blessing unto the Lord. And if you love the Lord, I don't know how you can't love children, even if they're a little bit difficult sometimes. I'm sure you were so easy to deal with when you were little, right? Oh, some of you, you were tough. You were tough, and you needed tougher parents. I get it. That's we, but, but even at that, the parents love the children. God even told them from the beginning. He made them male and female, and he said, you need to replenish the earth. To not, to, to dispose of that child is to defy the commandment of God, of the, one of the first commandments that God gave. It is outright rebellion. The scripture says that rebellion is as, a, as the sin of witchcraft. And we see where that results when you look at Revelation 21 and verse 8. That those who do such things, they go to the lake of fire. We need more salt in this world. People who recognize, I am here for a purpose. We need you here to prevent that toxic environment. Because the devil, he wants to make it toxic. And our world is conducive to do that. But you're here. You're to help filter through that stuff. 
One of the final things about being about salt is that it just brings out the taste of things, doesn't it? You ever had a piece of, I don't know, maybe, maybe you don't eat steak, but I, I like to eat steak. But I had a steak one time, and they forgot to put any seasoning on that thing. It was not good. But then I put a little salt on it, some pepper, and all of a sudden it changed it. It changed it from something that was almost tasteless to something that would that tasted good because the the seasonings brought the, the flavor out of the meat. Hey, that's what that's why you need to be here. You need to bring the goodness out of out of the gospel into this world. If you were not here, I mean, can you really can you really go up to the to the uh, abortion industry and say, oh, they have plenty of goodness to offer the world? Can you really go to those wicked environments and say they bring goodness into the world? No, they they don't. Even they admit there's no they don't bring goodness out. All they do is make people angry and bitter, and it just builds on top of each other. It's almost like you know, Romans, what chapter, I think it's 2.10, it says that it's like they heap wrath on top of wrath because of the sin and the wickedness. It just piles on them. There's, they, there's nothing. But man, if that person could get a hold of the gospel, it changes things. And it brings goodness. Whereas they, life, whereas they looked at their life and they said, you know, my life is miserable, it's worthless, it's reckless. And then all of a sudden they get the gospel and it's like now there's value and, they're, and it's worth something. And they can contribute to the society. They're no longer the, the reject of the society, but, they're, but now people like talking to them. They, and, they like, and they like being around them. They're, they're like, they don't even know why. they. You know, I was talking to this wood, man, all kinds of things happen at church camp that you just wouldn't believe. One morning I was sitting there, I, you know, I'm trying to get, you know, five or six cups of coffee in my system because I've been up till like past midnight. So I, I, need, I need a lot to get me going. And I'm talking to this one kid. He, he just got acquainted with a, a church and, and, is, and has accepted the Lord, but he's still struggling through some things. And... We were, I, we were just kind of having a, a, a discussion, and I just kind of asked him some questions. And then, and then all of a sudden, he just started talking about the things that bothered him in life. And, when, and then after about a few minutes, he's like, I don't even know why I'm telling you these things. See, the kid had had some issues with his dad. He was bitter against his dad. But as he's sitting there talking to me, I'm not, I'm not doing anything. I'm just listening to him listening to him and I asked him I'm like have you ever forgiven your dad and he's like well my dad called this week and we had a good conversation and, and you could see that the bitterness against his father was being lifted j just as I was talking to him you know what that is that's just being a little tiny bit of salt in a, little, in a, in a young man's life just being willing to listen to him you see, what happened is he got out of that wicked environment just for a little bit. And he got around a bunch of, bunch of people who were acting like salt and light. And, he, and, it's, and all of a sudden, the goodness of the gospel is being lifted in his life. And he's able to overcome and to pass through some things and understand why he feels the way that he does. He didn't know why he was so angry at his father all the time. But all of a sudden, the gospel comes in. And it starts to surface. Because once, you, once it surfaced, then you can deal with it. Because you can, you've, got to be, you've got to forgive. And that young man is well on his way to knowing the truth of the gospel in his life. And being healed by the power of the cross. You see, the cross to this world is foolishness. But to us, us who believe... It's the power of God in a person's life to really transform and to change them. To remove that bitterness and the sourness of this world. That's what salt does. That's what salt does. 
And then look at verse 14 with me. It says, you are the light of the world. Not only are you supposed to be the salt of the earth, you're supposed to be the light of this world. A city that's on a hill, on a hill just can't be, can't be hidden. You know, I live between Perigold and Jonesboro and Brooklyn. And you know, and there are certain nights I can go outside and I can see the lights of all three of those cities at the same time. You know why? Because cities on a hill cannot be hid. Their lights glow. And you can tell which direction is which. You may not know north, south, east, or west. If you go, if you if you come out of the door of my house during the daytime, but when you go when you do at night, you can see the lights from those places. Well, that's what we're supposed to be. When people don't know which direction to go in this world. We're supposed to be those lights in the darkness. So they don't have to wonder where we are or where we stand. They know where we are and where we stand. We don't need to hide that. that and that's what Jesus says. In Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18. But the path of the just is as a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. You see... The, when you are the light of the world, it just cannot be hid. It's going to glow. You can't help it. You can't help it. You ever, have you ever seen one of those maps of the earth, uh, uh, like Google Earth, the nighttime view? And if you look all over the earth, there's a bunch of really dark places in this world, isn't there? But where the gospel has shined the brightest, look to those places. It's lit up the most. And the United States has been a bright beacon of light and hope for a long time. But you know what we're starting to experience? Some darkness. You know, I feel bad for those guys out on the West Coast right now. Lake Mead, behind the Hoover, Hoover Dam. Electricity goes to 11 million people. And their lights are about to be shut off. Can you imagine that? And you, if you go, if you go in that direction of the world, you know we know what's out there, don't we, Brother Bill? They don't call uh, Las Vegas Sin City for no reason, right? There's a reason, and it looks like their lights are about to be shut out because they lost their focus on why. Our country had lost its focus on why we were here. God used us to provide protection and a hope for this world. Where we were sending missionaries out, we were the, we were the hub of missionaries going out. And now we need missionaries in our, inside, of our, inside of our borders. What happened? The lights People were hiding that light because they had the pleasure that sin just for just for a season. The lights were not made to be covered. They were made to shine. And we need to shine brighter than we have ever shined. And I know it's tough when it, when it feels when you can feel the darkness. Have you ever been in a place like that? You know, when we were in you when a. Of course, I keep telling you a bunch of stories. I hope you all have patience with me today. But, man, when we were in Utah, we, we visited this cave, and we went, like, I don't know, a mile back in this cave. It was huge. And when we got back in there, they shut out the lights. And you couldn't see. You know, can I, can I tell on you, Devontae? Go ahead. We were, this week, remember? We were in the, we were in the cabin, and, somebody, and Devontae needed to go take a shower. And we, but he was waiting until we turned out the lights. And we turned out the lights. And he wasn't ready to go yet. He's like, I can't even see myself. And I'm like, brother, that right there will preach. <laughs> so we had some fun with it. But hey, when the, when the lights are not shining, people are lost in the darkness and they cannot find their way. And I handed him a flashlight. And it made it a lot easier to journey. And, and I'll tell you what, it's a treacherous environment if you're going to walk through our cabin in the, middle of, in the middle of the darkness. 
If you've ever been to camp, you know what I'm talking about. It's a minefield. And I'm not even joking. It's crazy. It looks like there's been explosions happening in that place. Lights are not supposed to be covered. They're made to shine. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Look, you cannot be light and dark at the same time. You are either going to be one or the other. You're either going to be a, a light that, people can, that helps people see where they're going, or you're going to be darkness that blinds people and leads them astray and guides them through the, the landmines of life. Which are you? You cannot be both. You cannot be both. You will either be one or the other, and it glows for all who are near. Romans 2, 19 through 20. Listen to these verses. And are confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and the truth in the law. You see, can you look at yourself and say, I am a guide to the blind. And it's not because you're so smart. It's because you serve a God who's so smart and he's given you something. What does the scripture talk about with his word? Thy word is a light into my path, right? It is what I use to guide. And if I'm following God's word, I can totally be confident. I can be an instructor of the blind. I can help those who do not know the way I can I can give them I can get I can I can give them what they need to find Jesus themselves a teacher of babes it glows for all who are near and you know what else the light does the light reveals what you're actually doing does that make sense to you it reveals the works that's in your life. It's like you live by the light. I mean, anybody in here want to hammer some nails in the dark? Yeah, you're going to hit the wrong nail one or two times, right? That's painful. Hey, turn the light on. The light reveals your works. Jesus declares the type of work that true believers perform. Good works that glorify your Father in heaven. You want to know? If your work that you're doing, if your life is good, does it glorify your Father in heaven or does it glorify something else? That's how you know. That's how you know. Philippians 2, 15 and 16, listen to this, these verses. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and a perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world holding forth the word of life that I, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. You see, we're running a race. We're laboring. Don't let it be in vain. Shine that light. Be blameless. Be harmless sons and daughters of the Almighty without rebuke. You know, you may live in a crooked and a perverse nation, but we have seen this week that there can be hope even in one of the most crooked and perverse nations. And you realize we are one of those, right? There's only like five or six nations in the world that allow abortion, and we're the leader. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? But now we've seen what salt and light looks like. I wanna, I'm going to close with, two more, with a couple more verses. In Mark chapter 9 and verse 50, it's going to look very similar to one that we've already read. It says, salt is good, but if the salt have lost its saltiness, wherewith, it wherewith will ye season it? Have salt in yourselves and peace one with another. Have salt in yourself. Let me refresh your memory back. You know, are you one of those good people? That you're, that, you, that you're valuable with the gospel. People see, it, see that there's value 
in the things that you're having to offer that they that they feel like oh man when he when you're around it's like i'm learning something are you helping to restrain hell's effect on on our civilization are you helping to stabilize that environment are you preventing those the, the the toxins from taking over do you bring out the goodness of the gospel in your life have salt in yourself and then light. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse, look at verse 8. And it says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Look what he says. The fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness. If you are wondering... If you're wondering what light is, it's goodness and righteousness. Righteousness is being right with God. That you love his word, you love the commandments, you love what God brings to the table. Proving. Proving those things. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Like you can prove those things that are acceptable unto the Lord. You know, this week, I had an opportunity to talk to somebody that they were, they were very interested in an alternate lifestyle. And you know what I did? I proved with God's word those things that were acceptable and the things that were unacceptable. Not by my standards. I didn't. I told the person, I'm not judging. God has already judged a few things. All I'm doing is... It's presenting his word. His word tells me those things that are acceptable. His word tells me the truth. His word is the light. When you want to go down that dark path, God's word will light it up so that you may know you're not. You're either going to be one or the other. You're not going to be both. You cannot say, well, I want I want the light of heaven in my life, but I don't want to live like righteousness and goodness in this world. I want to do what I want to do because I feel like I got some kind of chemical imbalance in my life. Listen, maybe you do, but if you venture down the road of sin and you want that sin in your life, then you're going to reap the rewards of sin. And the scripture tells us what that reward is. Thou shalt not inherit the kingdom of heaven. Revelation 21, 8 will tell it like this. Those have their part in the second death in the lake of fire. That's what the scripture says. I'm not telling you where you're going. The scripture tells you where you're going. If you're, you're either going to let it be a light unto your path or you're going to say, no, I want to live in darkness. I want to live in that blindness. I don't want to know. I'm sorry. Now you do. Now you got to deal with it. Look at us as we finish up proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Hey, God's got a word for you. Be salt and be light. And you know that as we approach the end of days, it seems like that there's less salt and light of believers coming out. But that doesn't have to be you. It's, it's high time that we present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable unto God. What does the scripture say? That is your reasonable service. Hey, are you salt? Is your life full of salt? Is your life full of light? I hope it is. If it's not... Today's your day. Today's your day. To be saved. To be born again. Recommit. Lord, I want to shine brighter. I want to bring out the goodness of your word more than ever. In Jesus' name, I, as, 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 as we begin to pray. In fact, I was kind of praying that in my life. <laughs> I forgot I was preaching for a second. Hey, I want, I want salt and light in my life. Y'all just don't know. 
when we were dealing with people, man, I saw a lot of hurt folks this week. And they don't know about this salt and this light in their life. But you do. I've given you the word this morning. Would y'all stand and pray with me just for a second? You don't have to come up this morning, Brother Sean and Isaac. We're just going to pray, and then we're going to end with a song. Dear Lord, that you would help us to receive your word, that you would guide us in your way, and that you would bless us, Lord, that we may be able to understand what salt and light really is in our life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I got a song for you. Some of you know what it is, right? <laughs> this little lot of mine. <laughs> Amazing Grace would be good, too. Will y'all sing that song with me? All right, hold up your light. Because you're supposed to be the light of this world, right? This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel? Hide it under a bushel. No. I'm not convinced. <laughs> Hide it under a bushel. No. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No. I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel. No. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let it shine until Jesus comes. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine till Jesus comes. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And all God's people say it. Amen. Amen. Let your light so shine in this world. Don't let it be hid on a, a city of, of lights is not hid. It cannot be hid. Be salt in a, be the salt of the earth. There's a world out there that needs you to be. That needs you to be. Brother Sean, would you dismiss us? Most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this.